when you think about that for a second, let me, here's some ramifications, and we're seeing this with Bruno, uh, the movie that came out recently. Before people left the theater, this, this movie had breakout numbers the first day. But people were twittering that it sucked before it was even over. And by the first movie in history, that by the second day, totally collapsed. Not the weekend, totally collapsed. The reason is peer-to-peer -peer power. If five friends tell you that the movie is horrible, and they saw it this weekend, it no longer matters how many millions the Universal Studios or whatever other studio out, out there spends telling you it's the greatest thing you ever saw. It's not going to work. You trust your friends. You don't trust institutions. You don't trust the top. It's the bottom gaining <coughs> power. And that's really important. So you have to ask yourself, if we're all trained to be Goliaths, we're all trained to be masters of the universe, making sure we control the brand, we control everything, and these swirling armies of David's people connecting together or coming or, or, or who find something, had a bad experience with your brand, decided to say something or do something about it, organize around it, a good experience, where do you want to be in all this? Because you sure as hell don't want to be Goliath anymore. Um, yeah, we got that one already, Joe. You want to be the slingshot. You want to give the Army and David's the tools they need to promote their brand, to do what they want for their lives, their experience. It's like Jerry said, everything they touch. How can you give them the slingshots everywhere? Good experiences. Everything touches the brand. Everything you do has to be hand at every point has to be handing out a slingshot to empower that army. To to further your brand. To, 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 to come up with ideas that make it a better brand. Um, and, and I think that's the key, the key thing here. And if you think about it, the, the classic example is Goliath, which is the Recording Industry Association of America. And every company that was a member of it and may still be, I think there's a lot fewer of them now. But anyway, um, they decided their Goliath and sat there with their hands over their ears saying, no, 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 you're going to have to buy the entire album to get the one song that you want. We don't care that the rest of the music ain't any good. You have to buy the whole album. And Napster and a bunch of army recruits started building and building and building, illegally sharing files, but they changed, the, they started to fight and change the distribution of music to, an, to a Goliath that wasn't listening, didn't care, thought it was all powerful, and didn't have to change. And then Apple comes along and says, well, we'll give you guys slingshots. iPods, iTunes. The slingshot companies croaking everybody. The Goliaths are all losing 25, 30% of, of, of their profits. Um, and so just really quickly, that, and this is happening, it's, it's happened at CBS News with Dan Rather and a blogger named, a poster named Bunkhead, who turned out that he was an expert on IBM Selectric um, uh, typewriters and was able to challenge CBS News and Dan Rather and say, that document you have up there on the screen about George Bush is forgery. They didn't have, IBM Selectrics didn't have that font back in 1974. And so the Army starts to rally again over that long, and um, Dan Rather resigns, and a lot of producers don't get to resign their fire. This is happening, this is going to happen um, throughout, uh, it's going to be this kind of disruption now uh, as we get deeper and deeper into this. So um, the, the, the big keeper is to listen. I mean, that's what, that's what it, 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 you know, to, to understand what's happening, we really have to be keyed into what people are saying. I think that's one of the big things corporate uh, brands can immediately do with uh, social media is monitor and listen. I mean, the, the thing is, we, 
All these conversations always have been happening. They were just happening around the about the brand. They're just happening around the water cooler at work, or over the dining room table, or over the neighborhood fence. And we didn't get to listen to them. We didn't get to listen to what people were saying about the brand, or saying about the movie, or saying about the candidate. Now, if you're inside the campaign, you can like actually go in, monitor, and see what they're saying, and and decide to react. How can we? What what slingshots can we can we use to deal with that? So, I mean, I think listening is really important. It's definitely a first step uh, and a key thing to first in terms of jumping into this. Um, empower your consumers. Um, they they. And this is true, I mean, in all the campaigns I've been involved in, whether corporate, nonprofit, or in politics, it's amazing how many brilliant minds are out there that are turned out to be a hell of a lot smarter than all of us at corporate headquarters or campaign headquarters because sometimes we're too focused on the wrong things and they spot something, and as soon as they, you see it and read it on Twitter or Facebook or the blog, you you just go. That's ingenious. How come we didn't? How could we be? You know, not see that. And I think that's over and over again the case. And then um, look um, again. Figure out how to s put the slingshots out there. Be be pioneers. I don't think. Um, I think to to my own experience is that uh, people are afraid of this stuff. Uh, and it's not just. It's in politics. It's in corporate America. It's in, it's in a. a uh, nonprofits and um, my view. My view is the first movers, people who actually start. I don't mean jump in from the 16th floor into the deep side of the pool. I don't think anybody needs to do that. That's not what I'm saying. But I do think being determined about understanding the world's changing. It's you're not going to retire before it changes. Okay. It, it, it's it's none of this like please let this change happen. Let me retire before this all, all takes over. It's not going to work. Um, you know, so there's a bunch of techniques. Get yourself a 22-year-old mentor. Um, there's a bunch of different things you can try to do. This, 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 but the smarter thing, I think, is to, is to realize, um, I said in the Dean campaign that we were the, uh, later on I said that we were the Wright brothers, um, and that the Obama campaign was Apollo 11 in one one shot. We went from the Wright brothers to Apollo 11 in three years. Um, well, we're all Wright brothers. Uh, we're going to do some things wrong, we're going to learn, we're going to do some things better, but we're going to pioneer a new age in terms of how marketing and PR and, um, and reaching out and empowering consumers and having them be part of helping grow the, improve the brand. It's all a new age. It's a new time. I think very exciting, a big opportunity for people who, who get in, try to understand it, realizing they're going to, you know, not every single thing is going to go right, but a lot of things, enough things are going to go right that it's going to make a big difference. I'm the mobile girl. Um, we're mostly talking about social media so far. I'm going to talk ex almost exclusively about mobile for a few moments, but I think um, based on what I've heard so far, it's going to work. Um, and we have this nice theme, brands are masters, and listening to everybody talking about brands are masters and, and seeing what everybody's done with it so far, I feel like that scene from the movie Chinatown, one of my favorite movies, you, you know the Chinatown movie? Yeah. So famous scene, Faye Dunaway, it's near the end of the movie, and it, this is a total spoiler alert if you haven't seen it and want to, but uh, at the end of the movie, one of the things that you've been confused about all the way through gets solved when she finally confesses that another woman, in the ca another character in the film is both her sister and her daughter. My sister, my daughter, my sister. No, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. You have to see the movie. All right, so it's a brand, it's a, it's a slave, it's a ma yeah, okay. I'm gonna argue that uh, <laughs> brands have to be masters of mobile. And I'm, I'm going to talk about it in the imperative sense. Not that brands get to be masters of mobile, but they need to figure out how to be masters of mobile. And I'm going to talk about three things, why that's the case, why there is an imperative, and what the opportunity is actually like, because I don't think everyone quite sees the uh, speculative future, as Nico says. 
Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the challenges, which are very familiar to people, but I think we have to concede them before we can move on. And then I'll talk about a few examples in terms of things that you need to think about. And the 